Rabbi Baruch Gelman, who is originally from Mexico City but is currently in Beersheba, told a story in Spanish, which I wanted to relate in English. It relates to this last week's parasha, uh, and it begins with the following. It says that a man was in a particular neighborhood, and he was looking to buy a home. He had fallen in love with the area, uh, but unfortunately there were no homes that were on sale. And so he came out to a house that he liked, and he approached the, the owner, and he said, I, I love this neighborhood. I'd love to be part of this neighborhood. I'd like to offer you a, a very good offer for your home. And the individual said, thank you. You know, I appreciate the, uh, the offer, but I'm not really interested in selling, so thank you very much. A few days pass, and that individual again visits the neighborhood, and he can't find anything to buy. So he approaches the same individual and says, listen, you have a two-story house. What about if you sell me half your house? I'll pay you handsomely for it. I'll give you a great offer. Um, you know, it'll be something advantageous to you. The, author, the uh, owner of the home says, well, basically the same thing. You know, thank you, but I'm, I'm not interested in selling. And this process continues on for several days. You know, sell me a room, sell me a closet, sell me something. Um, I really love this neighborhood. I want to feel like I have roots in this neighborhood. And so eventually what the uh, prospective home buyer says is, listen, sell me uh, one square inch of your home. I just want to you know, put a nail, hang up my, my hat, so to speak, so I can feel that I have some roots here. And so he gives the, uh, the, the homeowner a very generous offer, and the homeowner thinks it's, it's just a square inch, right? I mean, what, what, what harm could that do? And so he signs the papers, and uh, he agrees, and he's happy with his uh, deal. And then about 3 o'clock in the morning, the individual who bought the square inch of real estate, if you will, comes into the door, you know, starts hammering on the wall, and the homeowner is shocked. You know what's going on? There's a home invasion or something of that nature. So he gets up, and uh, it turns out that it's the, the individual that he had sold the one square inch uh, real estate to. And he says, what's going on? And he said, no, 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 I just wanted to, you know, put, put my nail in, and I'm going to hang out my coat, and that's it. So, you know, thank you. Thank you very much. Good night. He leaves, and uh, the homeowner is sort of scratching his head and basically goes back to bed. Well, the next night, it happens again. You know, two, three, four in the morning, uh, the, the, the uh, individual who has sold the small square inch tube comes in, and he's, you know, making a lot of noise, and he's taking off the coat, and he's putting it back on. And the homeowner comes in, and he's like, what's going on? Oh, no, no, it's, it's okay. I'm just, you know, taking my, my coat, and, uh, and uh, just wanted to, you know, go out with that uh, to do my errands, whatever he's doing at that time in the morning. And uh, so the homeowner goes back to bed. And this continues over a process of time. He starts bringing in tools. He starts bringing in laundry that hasn't been you know, washed. It's stinky. It smells. And the homeowner is, in many ways, unable to bear it because the stench and the odor and the fact that he's coming in so late at night, uh, just to hang up his you know, one-inch, uh, square-inch, you know, whatever he can put on that, um, he's so irritated by that that he eventually leaves. And he just can't take it anymore. The smell, the you know, disturbances and so forth. And so what Rabbi Baruch Gelman says is, in essence, this is very much like the Yetzichara, the, the evil inclination. Evil inclination does something you know, little by little. It doesn't look for typically a, a very expansive uh, temptation, if you will, something that people struggle with. It looks for that small entrance that people can uh, you know, consider, ah, oh, it's not that big of a deal, I'll, I'll let it slide. And then it, from there, it begins to penetrate, if you will. You know, the odor of it begins to uh, engulf the individual. And the relation to Parshat Pinchas, and of course the previous parsha, was the issue of the women of Midian and how they approached the children of Israel. And we can just imagine that what they did, they didn't come up to them and say, hey, let's go worship other gods. I'm sure it was just a smile and uh, just a wave. And then they began to talk, and oh, we just happen to have some food. Uh, oh, we just happen to have some wine. And things continue to develop until these individuals fall into idolatry and all the things that are associated with that. And what's interesting is that in the case of this last week's parsha, Parsha Pinchas, with the daughters of Sulafad, uh, we have sort of the opposite scenario because they want a piece of the land of Israel. They don't know how much they're going to get. They don't know what their father was going to be entitled to. But they're like, hey, why should our father, why should we be deprived of the fact, uh, you know, that my father didn't have any sons? Why should we be deprived of a stake in the land of Israel? And I think that's extremely important because they don't know what that entails. They don't know what they will face in this new promised land. But they want their portion in holiness. They want their portion in Hashem. And they are not going to allow anybody, if you will, 
to deprive them of something that they believe they uh, not simply desire, but that they deserve. They want to be close to Hashem and the promise that he has made. And I think that's very impressive because in many ways, it's easy for us to you know, allow these small uh, temptations to become bigger. But how many times do we do the reverse and how much you know, effort do we put into fighting for that piece of kedusha, that piece of holiness? Um, and I think that should be uh, something that we all aspire to in our daily lives.